Congratulations, you're the proud owner of a retro game collection. So, what do you do now? Well, playing it would be my suggestion. Staring at it is another popular option. But taking care of your collection is something I think just about everybody can agree on. Luckily, this is a process that shouldn't take a lot of effort. You're not taking care of something living, which is good to know because I used to just think my Genesis was constipated from not eating its vegetables. That being said, if you're into retro game collecting specifically, you're dealing with stuff that that is old. And what does old stuff do best? That's right, get even older. Naturally, our collections include stuff that we plan on having for a long time, like until we pass away, and even then, I know some of us have requested certain games make their way into the grave with us. When it comes to taking care of older video games, I like to break things into two main categories, cartridge games and disc-based games. Let's start with the most retro of the bunch being cartridges. Now, what makes cartridges so great is how durable they are. I threw a cartridge I don't care about into the toilet from one of my videos and it still worked after. Wouldn't suggest doing that. In fact, tip number one, don't throw your games in the toilet. But point is, they're durable. Even still, you might as well keep them protected so they can last for the long haul. If we're talking about cosmetics, then the outside of a cartridge is going to be the biggest concern and specifically the sticker label. We've all run across sticker labels on games that were pretty jacked up to begin with, but if you have some games in nice condition, it sure would be nice to keep them that way. First things first, wash your filthy hands. Even if they're not that filthy, just wash them anyways. As a general rule, I always wash my hands before I play or handle any of my collection. Of course, not eating while handling your game stuff will help as well. And if you do want to eat, try to favor dry stuff or anything that won't stick to your fingers. But still, I'd say for the most part, you're better off just avoiding food altogether, although I suppose you could always try getting creative to work around this. Drinks are gonna be a safer bet, assuming you don't spill them, which always seems like it's something that would never happen until it does. Okay, so assuming your hands are clean, your cartridges should be fine when handling them. That is, unless you get a little too aggressive while inserting and removing cartridges. Not doing that might seem like a no-brainer, but I've seen way too many Game Boy cartridges that look like this to assume it's common sense. Also, tagging along with my nasty hands theory, I think the Game Boy cartridges fall into that logic well, since your hands are more likely to be gross when you're on the go. While Game Boy cartridges are the most likely to get banged up this way, other cartridges can still suffer from similar abuse. The designs of these games even try to help you out in some cases. Genesis carts have a little spot on the back for you to grip, NES carts have a designated spot to grip, and N64 carts can't have their end labels damaged because they don't exist. That's why they did that, right? And let's not forget one of gaming's greatest gifts to gamers. That's right, the eject button on the Super Nintendo. Nintendo. Uh, somebody call the courtesy police because I've caught Nintendo red-handed. Oddly enough, I always see people saying how they ignore this function. I don't get it. That's like if somebody tried to open a door for you and you just slammed it back in their face so you could do it yourself. Okay, when cleaning the outside of your games, you'll want to be careful too. Don't get too aggressive with it. Cleaning the plastic part is usually fine, but again, those sticker labels, you gotta watch out. Of course, some stickers are more durable than others. I found the N64 sticker labels to be the least durable. I tried to gently erase some stains off the label of a golden eye cart once, and let me just put it this way, the cart you see here is a replacement to that cart. But forget about cosmetics, what about protecting the most important part of any game? You know, the part that makes the game work? Yeah, that probably matters. Best way to do this is to keep the pins of a cartridge clean. The best way to do that, I found, is by keeping them covered. Genesis cartridges luckily lay flat when placed on a surface, so we're all set there. As for Nintendo and Super Nintendo, they don't lie flat, but there are the official dust sleeves that typically aren't too hard to come by. No dust sleeves for the N64 carts, though. What gives? It's like Nintendo said, end labels, dust protection. Yeah, good luck with all of that. You're on your own now. But regardless of what kinds of cartridges you're dealing with, you should try to keep the pins from being exposed the best you can. 
Now, even with all these preventative measures, the contacts on your games can still get dusty and dirty. What most people like to do nowadays to clean these is use the good old rubbing alcohol and Q-tip combo. By the way, some recent studies have shown that you shouldn't use Q-tips to clean your ears, so I think we can officially say that their main purpose is to clean retro games. Some people will say to go for the 91%, but 70% should still be okay if that's all you can find. What I wouldn't recommend, and I've talked about this before, is blowing on your cartridges, potentially getting moisture and even spit into your carts, which isn't gonna age well in there. But I've gotten my cartridges to work by blowing on them, some of you may say. Well, hate to break it to you, but what was actually getting your cartridges to work was reseating the cartridge into the console each time you popped it back in, giving the pins another chance to connect properly. The blowing on the cartridge part in between was all just smoke and mirrors. And it's not just me who will tell you this. Everybody who's looked into this by now agrees. So sorry if this kills some of the nostalgia for you, but it's not good to blow into your games. All right, next up we've got disc-based games. And why not start with something that makes gamers' stomachs churn? Ew, gross. Nothing shows disregard and neglect than a stack of loose discs. Luckily, most of us keep our disc-based games in a case, or at the very least, some sort of binder. I mean, what kind of barn animal would do this? The reasons for keeping your discs put away are pretty obvious. You don't want those suckers getting scratched up. Putting your game discs away is an easy way to take care of them. Put your discs away back in the case that belongs to them, not the case of the next disc that you're going to use. That way the discs are always there where they belong and you're less likely to lose them. I can't imagine somebody losing their games, but it does happen. And I'd argue that the worst condition any game could be in is disappeared. Also, hold your discs from the sides to keep smudges off of it. Heck, you can stick your darn finger in the center, but whatever you do, don't hold your discs like this. Okay, but now we've got to talk about the CD games that come in these long cases, aka please don't break cases. These suckers are big, fragile, and make some of us nervous to do anything with them other than just look at them. Besides that, the manuals will get this funky bowing effect to them if you don't store them the right way. Don't store them like this to prevent the pressure and tabs from creating such an effect. Store them literally any other way and you'll be okay. Also, if you have the foam insert that a lot of these games came with, then make sure to keep that inside the case as well for extra support. Now, inevitably, you may want to replace these cases since they're so prone to cracking. For this, you can either buy a cheaper game and swap cases with that game, or sometimes you can even find places online that sell replacements. Luckily, the standard jewel cases are much easier to replace. With such a standardized design, you can just find any old CD case you have lying around, take it apart, and voila, your game has a new home. However, perhaps the biggest concern most people have when it comes to disc-based games is disc rot. I mean, it just sounds terrible. The fear is that eventually all discs will deteriorate and be rendered useless. Now, maybe this is true, but during my research, I came across something that I find encouraging. Basically, there are instances in which disc rot occurs due to manufacturing errors or variances in quality control. So my hope is that some discs are are less likely to suffer disc rot if they were pressed properly. This would make sense given the fact that some discs suffer disc rot sooner than other discs that are much older. As far as tips go, keeping your discs in unexposed, climate-controlled conditions is supposed to help as well. A lot of the discs that I've seen with disc rot look like they weren't taken care of very well. Call it a hunch, but I feel like if we take care of our game discs, then most of them should last for a really long time. You know that Kenny G CD that's been sitting in your parents' house in the same spot for years in a climate-controlled environment? Yeah, that sucker is never gonna stop working. And depending on your tastes, either fortunately or unfortunately. I have all my discs stored in an ideal environment, so I'm curious to see if old Dr. Disc Rot comes to pay any of them a visit. May require a bit of patience, though. Oh, and here's a tip for both disc and cartridge games. Don't leave your games exposed to the sun. Sure, you're probably not going to leave your games outside, but even just near a window that the sun can shine through could harm your games, most notably by fading the labels. And no, I wouldn't recommend sunblock if you do really want to keep them in the sun. 
Okay, so we've covered a lot of what you can do to take care of your games, but what about what others can do to not take care of your games? That's right, remember how rule number one in this video was don't throw your games in the toilet? Well, whether or not your games get thrown into the toilet may not be entirely up to you. Keeping your games out of reach of anybody who may not treat them with the same respect as you can be a very real concern. And who are the primary candidates for this kind of shenanery? You guessed it, kids tyrants of the home. Keep them out of reach, teach your kids how to handle them, use locks, do whatever it is you have to do to keep them safe. Sounds simple enough, but your success pulling this off will vary. All right, but I think that about does it for all the advice I can give. I know a lot of it probably seems pretty obvious and intuitive, but I found that taking care of your collection is more about making sure you do all the little things and not taking them for granted. And yes, I found that goes for taking care of just about everything, including people, which is convenient, right? It would suck if taking care of your games was some huge hassle. Now, if your games or consoles are broken, then that's a whole nother story, as this video is more about some of of the preventative measures that you can take. That said, I would like to hear whatever tips any of you may have when it comes to taking care of your collection, or perhaps just what your general mindset is when it comes to taking care of your stuff. I'd love to hear what you have to say, so be sure to leave those comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video. He's the red bird, yeah. And he's talking, talking about video games. He's